Welcome to the Laws for Creativity. This is the brief, unplugged version. In this version, we're giving you the laws as succinctly as possible. If you need a more expansive view of these laws, then other productions are available for you. And unplugged means that we're keeping our costs down by giving you a production which is not production-based. In other words, it's just you and me and a whiteboard and the laws to share. And really, that's all we need. What is creativity? Creativity is that which is yet to be done. It is that which resides within you. It is that untapped energy source, that universe that exists within you that wants to be expressed. Creativity is creation yet unborn. It is the powers, the knowledge, the joy, the battle, and the triumphant success that all resides within you and all flows from you into the world. It changes the world and it changes you. It changes you by empowering you. No longer will you feel a victim of circumstance. No longer will you feel that the world or the events in the world are beyond your control to achieve your own happiness, your own powerful destiny which awaits you. Fear and uncertainty, sadness, all of these things are dispelled. They're all pushed out of your being by the forces that flow through you when you realize how powerful you are as a creator. And you will come to that realization through the successful study of these laws. These laws in basic form are very easy to understand. And that will give you the key to unlock those powers and you will feel those forces flow through you and you will feel satisfied and fulfilled as a creator. But what will you be creating? Well, this is just it. Everything that you do is a creative act. Every time that you move your hand, that is an act of creation. Every time you speak, every time you write a shopping list, everything that you do is an act of creation. Therefore, the study of these laws empowers your daily life, millisecond by millisecond. And that's an incredible feeling to have because you no longer feel any sense of oppression. You no longer feel fear or disappointment. You know that those forces, as they flow through you, are dispelling fear, dispelling uncertainty, and creating a world of your own make. For those of you, too, who want to study the laws in depth, students of creativity, these laws empower you to a very, very profound degree. And the study of them is very, very in-depth from here to the edge of eternity for all of mankind. Now, I'm going to need your help because in this unplugged version it's just you, me and the whiteboard and I'll need your imagination a little. I'll need your help in using your imagination so that you can see what it is that we're talking about. So come with me on a journey then through the laws for creativity and by way of introduction let's look at who and what we are as people. Most people, when they look at a human being, see simply the human body. They see things going into that human body and they see things coming out of that human body. Do you see people that way? In fact, the human being is far more amazing than that. In order for us to understand the creative forces that are available to us, the creative powers that we are, we first of all need to understand who and what we are as individuals. And we're going to use a diagram to help illustrate that. Let's imagine that this is a person standing on the ground. That's their physical body. Surrounding this physical body is an area of sensibility. We call it that because this invisible part of you provides you with information. You can't see it, but it exists. It's a part of you. This is the part of you which you feel when you stand next to someone in a bank queue, for instance. You don't actually touch the person, and yet you can feel them. 
you feel them in this invisible part of you. The information that you might receive from someone, for instance, might be that the person is kind or fortunate and you feel that in, in this invisible part of you, you feel it as vibes. It might be that the information you receive is the person is treacherous or untrustworthy or something and you feel that too in this invisible part of you. It's your space, it's a part of you. To help describe who and what we are more fully, let's show this invisible part of you reaching up away from the physical world and the physical world exists here where the physical body is and the earth and up this part of you goes away high into ethereal levels of creation. Now up here time and space doesn't exist. If you study time and space they are physical things, they are bound by physical consciousness, physical matter and that exists way down here where the physical body is. Up here in these very ethereal levels of creation are the great powers that we're going to speak about because up here exists knowledge. This is where knowledge exists. Above knowledge is wisdom. And above wisdom is understanding. These are great forces, parts of you, and this is where they exist in these ethereal parts of you, and then ultimately there is love. You can see that knowledge, wisdom and understanding are parts of the higher consciousness of what a person is. They're not bound by time. People have knowledge, wisdom and understanding to some degree at any point in time in man's destiny and in any place in the world. So knowledge, wisdom and understanding is not at all the domain of one person. It exists up here in the ethereal, magnificent, uh, more enlightened parts of consciousness and enlightened of course by love. Love is the ultimate force as though away up here there were no other force other than pure love. 